Why are OFDM subcarriers sync functions? And you've probably seen this picture here in the frequency domain showing the subcarriers, and they are shown as sync functions. Why are they sync functions? Well, let's think about the processing in the transmitter of an OFDM system. It starts with taking complex numbers, n complex numbers, and each of these complex numbers comes from a constellation. They represent the data. And for more detail on constellation diagrams, check out the description below this video. You'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel, including a video on constellation diagrams. So these complex numbers in OFDM are converted through an inverse discrete Fourier transform, or inverse FFT. And that produces a vector of the same length, of length n, that is then converted from parallel to serial and converted through a digital to analog converter into a waveform, which is then upconverted to the carrier frequency and transmitted over the channel. So let's think about this waveform here. I've just drawn one example of it here, and it's of length ts, the symbol time. So we're going to be sending this sequence of constellation points over the time ts, and it has a frequency domain representation like this. So how do these two functions here relate to each other? How do we understand them in terms of the subcarriers and to really understand why they are sync functions? Well, let's take one example of an input vector from here and think about how that gets transformed. Let's take an example where we put nothing in, zero, into all of the subcarriers except for the first one. So here's the vector here. And when that goes through the IDFT, the sequence that comes out, because it's the first element of the input vector, the sequence that comes out will be a sinusoidal waveform at the fundamental frequency. And that means one cycle over the length of the vector. And that's what I'm showing here. I'm showing one particular case here where the phase equals zero. So it's a cos waveform. So now let's think about the output of the DAC from this signal here. Of course, it is a continuous time waveform, which exists only between zero time and the symbol time. It is zero for previous time and zero for future time. So we can write this function as the multiplication of a cos waveform, and I've shown the cos waveform here in complex exponential form, and that multiplied by a rectangular function of width ts centered at ts on two. So this rectangular function here is zero for negative time, it equals one until ts and zero afterwards. When you multiply that by a cos waveform, which goes for all time, you'll end up with this function here. And it's this rect function which gives us these sync functions here. Why is that? Because if we want to think about the frequency domain of this expression here, then it's a multiplication in the time domain, so it's going to be a convolution in the frequency domain. And the Fourier transform of a rect function is a sync function. The Fourier transform of this complex exponential is a delta function. So when we convolve the delta function with the sync function, we're going to get the sync function located at the location of the delta function. In this case, that will be located at f1. For this one, it's located at negative f1. I'm just going to show the positive frequencies here. So here's f1. And it's the fundamental frequency. It is the frequency that it corresponds to 1 on ts. And at that location, we are going to have a sync function. This is why they are sync functions. So I'm going to draw that in here. And the sync function has this width. And of course, it's uh, given by the Fourier transform of this rect, as I said. So this is uh, 2f1 here. So the sync function comes about because that you are only sending for a finite amount of time in each of the subcarriers. So here we've got the waveform for f1. It's come about because we put an input in in the first element of this vector. So let's think about what happens if we put an input in the second element and all the rest are zero. So here we have this case here, and this is the second element. 
the output of the IDFT is going to be a sinusoidal waveform at twice the fundamental frequency. So now we can see two cycles within the period of capital N. When we convert that into the continuous time through the digital to analog converter, we're going to get this waveform here. This is a cos waveform at twice F1. So the equation for this will still be a rect function multiplying a cos, but now at 2F1, whereas before we had 1F1. And so in the frequency domain again, the Fourier transform, we've still got the sync function from the rect and is going to now be convolved with a delta function at twice F1. So now we have this function here. And of course, the same thing goes for the higher frequencies as well, the higher subcarriers, they're just coming about from these different constellation points at higher in the subsequent elements of the input vector. So hopefully this has given you more insights into OFDM and in particular why the subcarriers are sync functions. If it has, please like the video, it helps others to find it. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below. As I said, you'll find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.